potential for catastrophic disaster was uh, getting I suppose closer and closer the longer this ship stayed there and, and clearly I think the fact that with I mean literally in the last sort of 10 minutes I believe we've heard she's been freed and is on her way northbound so um, yeah a great relief I would think to all the thousands of ship owners and uh, sort of ship, ship uh, I suppose steamer that are stuck there uh, can get on their way. think this probably goes to show is the fragility perhaps of the global supply chain. I mean this is a very significant maritime artery, one of only two major canals in the world that you know uh, operate in this way in terms of moving ships from one ocean to another and so I think any blockage there has proven to be you know really really challenging and you know, even in the sort of, I, I hate to say post-COVID world, but we're sort of hopefully moving in that direction. You know, you've got to remember that 90% of the world's goods are moved by ship. That's why the maritime industry is still so incredibly important for uh, global trade. So any blockage of any kind that delays things has an um, unprecedented impact on uh, global trade. And that's exactly what we've seen in the last week. Sure, there are some ships that have absolutely decided that they're not hanging around. Um, if they'd have made that decision a week ago or four or five days ago, they're probably in quite a good position because I think what we don't know is how long it takes or how long it will take for the backlog to uh, to clear. Um, 300 ships, I believe, are delayed. You know, if it's 50 a day or more, you know, no, knowing you know the Suez Canal Authority, I'm sure they've got some ideas about how they can get ships moving through there slightly quicker and clear that backlog, but it will take time. And, uh, you know, the, the, the sort of economic dynamics are such that, you know, if you go around the Cape, uh, the Cape it, it does take you an extra week, broadly speaking. So, you know, if you hang around for a week, then, you know, you've got less fuel to burn. So perhaps it's, it makes sense to just stick it out and wait. be an investigation clearly because this has had such a big impact um, and you know exactly what's happened here I think will be uh, will be debated for some time you know what what do we do going forward to ensure it doesn't happen again um, again I would I would leave that to the competent authorities uh, that, that are in Egypt to decide how they want to make sure that traffic transits safely uh, through the canal because look it's in their interests to do that um, they've got a revenue stream that's important to them 
It's a major artery for the world. So none of us want to see this happening again. So anything that can be done to create a safer environment for this, I think will be looked at and, and dealt with in due course. Thank you.